Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on this Friday, October the 13th. A Friday the 13th today. And it's also, I guess, guys, I've never seen anything like this before. And I'm going to tell you what I've never seen anything like before. Uh, this. Get out of Gaza City. Israeli military tells Palestinians. It's over a million people. They give them 24 hours. Uh, do you know how hard it is to move 100,000 people? Even 10,000 people. You've got to evacuate a city of 10,000 people. You give them 24 hours. That's difficult. Move that up by 10 times. To 100,000 people, it becomes 10 times more difficult. Move it up to a million, and it becomes 10 times more difficult again. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, they've given them 24 hours. It says, uh, uh, they, it says uh, Israeli military told some 1 million Palestinians living in Gaza on Friday to evacuate the north, according to the United Nations. This is an unprecedented order. So unprecedented means we've never seen anything like it before, basically. Unprecedented. For almost half the population of the sealed off territory ahead of an unexpected an expect no ahead of an expected ground invasion against the military group Hamas. Wow. There's big stuff going on in the world right now. Huge. And this whole area in there around Israel is a flashpoint of unmeasurable proportions in the world right now. This is an enormous flashpoint. You can just feel all of the animosity coming from that small area in the world surrounding the Middle East. The Middle East right now is a powder keg. An unbelievable powder keg. And you've been warned how this, and I'm warning you here on my channel, how this could spread out into Something much bigger, something potentially that could affect you, even though there's an, it's an ocean away. It's way halfway, practically halfway on the other side of the world. It could affect you. Big time it could affect you in, in, in multiple ways. And one way is, is, is here in Toronto, here in Canada, uh, they're stepping up police presence today around the Toronto region here in Canada. But an awful lot of cities across the United States today are doing the same thing. They're becoming very alert and watching out for what's happening. Because this isn't the only way that this could affect you. This could spread out and involve much larger countries going to war with one another. War is starting to spread. It's starting to spread like chicken pox. Might be a, f a good time to think about your preps. And if you haven't started prepping, oh my gosh, you got to get going. Do you know how awful it is to be without water and to have your water, just your water cut off? All of a sudden, you go to the taps or whatever, and there's nothing there. Or you're not allowed to drink it, or whatever's there, you're not allowed to drink it. And you haven't got any water in the house, and you go down to the grocery store, and all the water's been cleaned off the shelf, and there's no water. Not only is no water, no pop, because they all thought of that too. No pop, no drinks of any sort. Gone. And what do you got left? This is very, it's imperative if you've done nothing else so far in prepping. If this is your first, you don't even know what prepping is. I'll tell you what it is. It's preparing for yourself for an emergency. First thing to start with is to get yourself some bottled water put away. 
because you cannot go more than 48 hours without drinking. I'm telling you. The Middle East right now is a powder keg. I've never seen such a desperate situation. Uh, as desperation in Gaza grows, Israel pledges to block vital aid until Hamas releases hostages. Jerusalem. The Israeli military pulverized the Gaza Strip with airstrikes, preparing for a possible ground invasion. invasion. It says th Thursday. To complete the siege of the territory, which has left Palestine desperate for food, fuel, and medicine. See, they're already experiencing what I think is going to come to the rest of the world, but later. Not yet. And right now, you can still go in, and you can still get food and prepare and, and preps, like water and candles and... Everything that you need, you can go still go in and get them. But what if you're going along some afternoon, going about your merry way, say say three or four days from now, or a week from now, or even a month from now, you're going along your merry way, and everything seems fine, and pop, the power goes out. You say, oh, this is just a temporary power outage. So you head home. Well, it's not a temporary power outage. It's something big has happened. But now, not only do you not have any power, but after a few days pass without power, now you got no water. You can't even cook your food because you haven't prepped. You could have had yourself a little stove, a little, uh, one of these little stoves that they use propane and you plug the propane in like the people use camp and you could have had something like that now you don't have that because you didn't do anything to prep prep you don't have any food put away for yourself you could have been cooking a can of beans on your little camp stove and and had bottled water to drink and 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 maybe even had a generator or something and, and finding out what the news is but now you got nothing because you didn't prep at all you, uh, your phone don't work anymore sorry you can't get gas for your car anymore because the power's been out for a few days and the local gas stations aren't pumping anymore you go down to the grocery store and it's locked and all the lights are out inside not going to get nothing there you gotta think about these things because war could spread and there is there's a danger that of infiltration in whatever country you're in of people that are on the other side of the war, the enemy, I'll call them the enemy, infiltrating your company your country and sabotaging. There's this danger, and this is already starting in Europe. They just sabotaged a pipeline. But everything that comes to you comes through pipelines. You got your pipeline in front of your house that pipes in your electricity. You know, you got your grocery store and the, the highways are like pipelines that bring in the, all your food that you eat. Your gas is delivered through pipelines. It's like everything's being piped to you, served to you on a silver platter... And it's always been that way our whole lives. We've had everything served to us. And we're used to it. So what are we going to eat this at? Oh, I feel like lobster. Oh, you can go out and get a lobster dinner. No problem. Every, anything you want. We've always had it that way. So this is what prepping's all about. It's getting down to the nitty-gritty of realizing that We've put too much faith in this system. And this system is so vulnerable to anything that could happen to shut it down. And then what are you going to do if you haven't prepared for that? I mean, I can't tell you guys. you got to get on it. And if you've done preps, 
I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing this afternoon. I'm going to devote this afternoon. And I've been doing this for the last... Because of the world situation, I can see that it's deteriorating so fast. And I know how fast everything could get shut down by a black swan event. I'm going to do some more prepping this afternoon. Probably on my list would be more bottled water. You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe four flats of, of bottled water with 36, I guess, bottles in each flat. That's what I'll do, and then and I'll probably go in and I'll probably try to buy some more canned food and stuff. Stuff I'll eat anyway. And, you know, we, prices haven't gone sky high either, and this is just as good as investing in silver, investing in canned food right now, because you know what the price you got to eat. You got to eat. You know what the price of that's going to be? It's going to double probably in the next six months. So whatever you buy today, it's like money in the bank. Because canned food's good for years. You can eat it years from now. Anyway, just talking, guys. Uh, because because why I'm talking is because of the situation. It's The world situation is deteriorating so fast. And I can see it coming home to roost at a certain point. In other words, right now, you read about it. You watch it on the news. You watch it on my show. But it's not affecting you personally yet. And when I say it's going to come home to roost, that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to, this is going to start to spread in one way or another and, and start to affect you personally. This is part of the reason why you're prepping right now. Uh, moving on and getting into the, the to the to the silver today. Now, here's the thing about this, guys. We're seeing a 92 92 cents pop upwards in the price of silver to 22.74 today. So it's up nearly a buck. Now, here's what I want to say about this: is do you notice? How over the past couple months, few months, that they've been knocking the price down. And you notice when they start to get down around $21, they always stop. They don't knock it any lower than that. It gets down to that $21 barrier and they just kind of, okay, they kind of give up and then they let it go back up again. Have you, have you been noticing that? And they've done that several times. The reason why is, and I, and, and this is what I believe personally, that the cost of associated with the miners mining the silver out of the ground, getting it to coin form, and, and, and after all in costs associated, including delivery, everything else, you know. I think that they have to have about 20 bucks in order to have any sort of a profit margin at all for these miners. And they know that. And they know if they drop the price below that, and there's no profit margin, that the miners will shut down mining production. Because they got no profit anymore. And this is why they've been knocking it down. They got a price, a floor, what I call a floor under the price, where they don't like to knock it down below that because it's going to inhibit mining production. And they don't want to inhibit, inhibit mining production because they want to keep this game going. And in order to keep this game going, they have to have physical silver for people who demand delivery or whatever. The, the paper is a representation of what they use to knock the price down. The paper short contracts of silver are a representation or a derivative of silver. And if they don't have any of the underlying asset, then they can't continue with this paper game. They have to have silver. And the miners produce the silver, and it's just a circle there where it, they have to keep that profit margin for the miners. So, what's going to happen very soon? When, if, if there's a Middle Eastern war, well, there already is a Middle Eastern war, but if it spreads out, if it fans out into a wider area, if things like Iran were to get involved, 
uh, oil prices are going to go up. And as oil prices going to go up, goes up, it uh, directly affects the price of silver. And it's not a stretch at all to see oil price go up enough where the cost of mining production goes up to 30 bucks from 20. And so then it would have a floor under it around $30. And that's what I think is actually going to happen. I think that probably looking out into the future, maybe a year from now or something, it's going to cost more than $20 for the miners to have a profit margin. They're going to have to have 30 then. And what does that mean? It means you've, you've, you've made probably, uh, if you buy silver, it means that each coin that you buy, say you pay, uh, say you pay this price right here, plus a premium. Well, it means that if it goes up $10, the cost of production, it means that they won't. Be, they'll have a floor under instead of at twenty dollars. It means it'll have a floor under at thirty, and you will have made money uh, on your investment. It will be worth more than it's worth today. Whereas a dollar will always be worth a dollar. But a silver investment could actually go up if oil prices go up. So, but that's minimal compared to what this wants to go up to. You know, I mean, a dollar, uh, I mean, a $10 raise in prices is minimal. This price of this stuff should be over $100 right now. It should be. It really should be. I mean, it's it's way undervalued. In cryptocurrency today, uh, Bitcoin is at uh, 26,716, so it's 26,716. Ethereum is at 1540 and XRP is at 48.1 cents. Taking a look at the Dow Jones today and it's up 45 points. It's erased earlier losses. We're taking a look at crude oil today at 86.39. It's up $3.48 on the day. Uh, yeah. There's another thing that could go astronomically high is gasoline prices. If there's a if there's a a widening out of this war in the Middle East, and it starts to affect uh, oil exports and stuff. Bonds and rates today. We're looking at fallen yields today. We're looking at uh, the U.S. ten-year. At 4.63, it's down 7.2 basis points. In the U.S., 30 years at 4.79, it's down 8.1 basis points. I'm taking a look at the U.S. dollar index at 106.74, and it's rising today. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye-bye.